it's uh, Tuesday, February 11th, 2020, 7.15 p.m. And the first and only item on our agenda tonight is an application of South Shore Habitat for Humanity, Inc., 302-304 Whiting Street, Map 187, Lot 24. Uh, this is a continuation from a hearing dated January 7th, 2020, for a comprehensive permit under Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40B, Sections 20 through 23, as amended to construct two affordable single family dwellings on approximately 0.95 acres of land located in residence district C. Um, I wanna uh, remind everybody in the audience that these proceedings are being filmed by HCAM this evening. So to the extent that you would like to speak, please come to um, the podium and make sure that you're speaking into the microphone so that uh, your voice will be picked up by the recording. Um, I want to just sort of set out what we're going to do tonight. The first thing is we're going to get an update from town council, Susan Murphy, who's here on the 10% letter, which the board was authorized to um, uh, send at the last hearing, the last public hearing that we had. Second, I'm going to ask the applicant for an update on what's happened since the last meeting. Uh, then we're going to hear from our peer review engineer, Pat Brennan. And um, I will also ask the applicant's engineer to give us an update on revised plans that were submitted today. And then last, we'll take public comment. Um, so first, I'm gonna turn it over to Susan to update us on the 10% letter. Okay, so the, um, the board voted at your prior hearing to um, submit the letter pursuant to the regulations, notifying the applicant um, of the that the town is at 10% pursuant to the current subsidized housing inventory. That is on record with DHCD. Um, the deadline for submitting that letter was January 22nd. It was timely filed. The applicant had um, 15 days to challenge that, um, which would have been February 6th. Um, that deadline has passed. There was no challenge filed by the applicant, so that part of the process is now complete. Excellent. Um, so I'd like to now hear from the applicant uh, as to whether there are any updates that they want to provide just to um, get everybody up to speed as to what's happened since the last hearing. I would defer to our engineer to address okay. the changes, if that makes sense. Sure. Do you want to do the changes now, or do you want, do you want to wait until them? Pat uh, gives his presentation, um, and I'll, I'll discuss it afterwards? I think first we should hear from Mr. Brennan, if that's okay, mm -hmm. and then because I think uh, some of what you're going to be presenting is probably Please. going to be in response to mm -hmm. his I comments. Um, Pat, you. yeah, would you mind standing up and speaking into the microphone, please? Mm. I'm Pat Brennan with Amory Engineers. I'm the uh, Zoning Board's peer review engineer on the project. Um, I did review the materials that had been submitted. Um, I <coughs> sent a letter to the Zoning Board on January 24th with uh, a number of comments. Um, I'll run through kind of the, the more substant um, comments and um, then I guess I'll wait for Mr. James to tell you how he responded to them, because I've already looked at his responses, so I kind of know where he's going with these okay. things. Um, so again, I'm not going to hit every one of these comments because I'm editorial in nature, and I don't think they're really that pertinent at this time. Um, the one thing that I, the first thing that I had asked for is an analysis to demonstrate that the there's adequate access for the Hingham Fire Department's large, largest apparatus. Um, I also asked for them to, look, to show in the plans the existing dwelling at 300 Whiting Street because that dwelling is pretty close to the property line. And I just wanted the board and everybody to understand what the proximity of one of the proposed dwellings is to that dwelling. Um, they have done that on the revised plan. Um, my next uh, concern was about the amount of cut that was proposed on the project. They were bringing the site down um, roughly two feet. Um, the whole top of the site down about two feet. So there was a net cut on the project and I was just asking that, and I understood that the reason that they were doing that was to try to lessen the slope coming up from Whiting Street coming up the driveway. Um, but I thought they could still do it and still kind of maintain the balanced site for the cut and fills. Um, 
the size of the proposed dwellings were different on the, the civil site plans in the original set than what was shown on the architectural plans that were submitted, so I just asked for some clarification on that. Um, I asked that they provide the site distance triangles at the proposed driveway at Whiting Street so that they can demonstrate they have adequate site distance for, for vehicles exiting as, as well as vehicles traveling on Whiting Street. Um, I asked for a proposed landscaping plan. Um, those were the general comments. And then I had some comments related to drainage and erosion control. Mm -hmm. I've been, I've, I asked for drainage calculations just to, so that they can demonstrate that the post-development project site will not have any additional runoff or won't increase runoff over the uh, existing conditions. Um, I'm just running through my comments because a lot of them they've already taken care of. I've asked for an operation and maintenance plan for the stormwater system. Um, they, they propose, the catch basin that they propose right now, the stormwater, the way it's designed is the stormwater from the driveway is proposed to be, to run off to the the west side of the driveway um, and be captured in a catch basin before it gets out into Whiting Street. Uh, that proposed catch basin has a, a, a special proprietary insert in it that provides advanced treatment because they, ju they just have the catch basin prior to an infiltration system. So they, they achieved required um, treatment by the stormwater standards with that special insert. So it's very important that they have an operation and maintenance plan in effect so that that insert can be properly maintained and it will actually function as anticipated. Um, for, for some comments on the utilities, I had asked that they show proposed utilities on the plan, gas, cable, television, electric, that type of thing. Um, they, in the materials, they said that the existing dwelling was served by an on-site well, however, that was not shown in the plan. So I've asked them to show that on the plans as well as, um, I said that, you know, that abandonment and decommissioning of that well will need to be in conformance with the Hingham Board of Health requirements. Um, I did note that the two, pro the proposed septic systems and reserved areas are outside of the map zone two, uh, which is the, you know, the, the Aquifer Protection District and the, and the, the, um, the boundaries where um, there's some restrictions on what you can do for the septic system. So these systems are, are proposed outside of that zone two. There is a, a portion of the zone two that cuts across the eastern portion of the site. Um, but again, the way that they've situated the site is so that those septic systems are outside of that boundary. Um, however, I do note they, do, they, they have some older test holes on the site. Um, I believe eight of them. They were done. Some of them were done in 2003. Um, under Title V, those are still valid. They're not valid under the, the Board of Health regulations. However, there's only one of those test holes that was within either the footprint of the reserve or the primary um, soil absorption systems for the two proposed septic systems that they're doing. Title V requires that you need two deep, uh, deep what they call deep holes in each reserve and each primary. So they need at least seven additional test holes for those septic systems that they have proposed. They've, in the, in the response, they've, they've acknowledged that. Um, I had some uh, comments on the septic systems that they had, um, but in basically um, most of those related to um, the need for the additional testing so that we make sure that we have the adequate separation from groundwater as well as the soils that they, that they found in those other test holes. Um, they did have a portion of the reserve area for 302 Whiting Street, which is the house further back into the site. A portion of that was within 100 feet of the bordered and vegetated wetland at the back of the site. Um, Title V only requires a 50-foot setback, but the Board of Health regulations require 100. Um, and I, just by looking at the plan, it looked like they could make it work to, f to make that 100 feet. Um, and on those reasons, <coughs> plans we have done that. Um, I also ask that they, they list the actual distances from the septic systems to the well, the existing uh, potable well at 300 Whiting Street. Uh, Title V requires a 100-foot setback. Um, the 
The setbacks from the two systems are 141 and change and 124 and change um, from that existing well. Um, and they, they did do that on the, on the revised plans. Um, those were kind of the, the major topics. There was a lot of other things that they have addressed in this revised set of plans. A lot of the things that I mentioned, they have addressed in the revised set of plans, and I'll, I'll go over those a little bit after Gary goes through his. Okay. Um, his okay, yeah, that was my next question. Yeah. But I think let's hear from the applicant's um, engineer just as to the updates that have been done, um, which I understand Mr. Brennan has now had an opportunity to somewhat review, and then we'll, we'll have Pat let us know what's outstanding still. My name is uh, Gary James. I'm the engineer on the project, and I'm here representing uh, South Shore Habitat for Humanity. Uh, Pat kind of stole a lot of my thunder, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, as, as Pat noted, one of the things that uh, the, probably the, one of the more significant things was the fact that I did have two larger uh, bil a building on there, a footprint on there. I had 24, 36, and the buildings are actually only 24 by 28. So. Uh, he was right in that, and what I did was when we looked at the uh, building on 300 and put it in, now the building at 302 has been rotated so that is now parallel with the, with the building on 300. By doing that also, we, uh, we modified the driveway a little bit so that the, now the driveway comes up to the front of that. I've added all the decks on, on the building, all the walkways in the front so that you now have pretty much uh, you know everything in terms of the overall impervious. I've listed the overall impervious on the site. I don't believe we'll use it much more than what, 12, 13 percent of the lot. That's about all we're utilizing. Is that, is this your plan over here in the yes, corner? Yes, it is. Do you yeah. want to bring it closer maybe just so some folks in the um, audience might be able yeah. to see? it was 12.9 percent was the overall impervious on the site so it's really not so we're pretty much leaving about 87 percent of the site in its open space uh, what we are proposing too is that we would like to put a stone wall along that left side along the derby brook side in an attempt to try and utilize a little bit more of the material maybe even flatten out that slope to be able to give the uh, the front house a little bit more of a backyard a little bit flatter backyard but we still have approximately 19, 18, and 1900 yards of gravel that we'd like to remove. Part of this is, and you'll see in the response letter that I gave you, was that I'm trying to uh, hold down the cost associated with the uh, development of these two houses. And I was kind of hoping that we could swap out the gravel that we're removing for even loam and even the stones that we're, that we, uh, the loam that we're going to need to be able, because right now there's hardly anything left on this lot pretty much all been stripped away and for the stones themselves so that's part of what you know there's a there's a secondary benefit associated with the removal of the material of the material even in spite of even before the uh, the issue associated with trying to reduce the uh, the overall height Pat was right we don't have uh, we do have an old lot of the old uh, perks on there they were from 2003 and they're really only there to show specifically what the material is which we know it's pretty much all gravel. Uh, it's, it's, we know that we're, we're going to have to go back in. We also need perk tests for the, uh, for the storm water. So, uh, you know, those, we've, we've got some additional, but we'd like to hold off and spend that money until, uh, until it's absolutely necessary. Uh, overall, uh, we do have calculations. I just haven't formalized the uh, narrative on the calculations, but I will submit the calculations before the end of the week. We will be preparing for conservation, and it will, we will bring it into conformance with stormwater, even though stormwater is not applicable in this site. 
we will bring it into conformance with stormwater standards and we'll demonstrate that in the calculations part of that will be we will uh, we will show Pat all of the uh, issues associated with the inserts in terms of what they how they perform what they can perform in the maintenance in the overall maintenance requirements associated with those in, with that insert uh, we have demonstrated we did put the uh, the fire department template on there to show that the new uh, the new the new ladder truck can get in there so that that's that's not an issue uh, by reducing the by putting in the correct size of the houses we have been able to move the septic systems both the primary and the reserve outside of the limits of the 100 foot buffer to the wetlands so we will maintain setbacks in accordance with the Board of Health regulations uh, that's pretty much it I mean we do show some landscaping it's it, obviously it's minimal okay Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Brennan, do you want to just respond quickly and just um, maybe identify the things that are still outstanding so we know for the next hearing yeah, you know, so what we need to... I'll just run over on. the things that are still outstanding. Yeah, thank um, you. The, um, Gar Gary reviewed the reason for the, the cut, the, the net cut on the site, um, so that's just kind of a board decision on that, on how you want to handle that. Um, obviously the drainage calcs as Gary said that he's going to submit those by the end of the week um, they did I had asked for erosion controls and he did show a proposed filter sock around the perimeter of the work area um, just wondering I, I think you should probably have a construction entrance stabilized construction entrance there too just so there's no tracking material out on a whiting street during construction um, the, the operation and maintenance plan is coming with those drainage calcs, so I'd be expecting to see that at, at that time. Um, the perk tests are the big things for the, for the septic systems, and he, they did show the proposed gas services to, to both houses, and just so you know, there's an existing utility pole up along the property line coming up, the property line that's shared with 300 Whiting Street that feeds overhead to the existing house. They're proposing to come overhead to the two proposed housing from that same utility pole, so the, the utilities will not be on the ground. They'll be overhead, so I just wanted to point that out. Um, and other than that, it's it's basically just getting the drainage calcs, making sure that that all works, and then when they get to the point of doing perk tests for the septic system, just to make sure that complies with all those regulations. So it, the outstanding items, they're substantial because the drainage is one of the more important things, but. They've, they've addressed the, the lion's share of what I had concerns over. Okay. Is there going to be a um, sidewalk on Whiting Street? No. no. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, I guess before we get to um, public comment, any board questions that you'd like to ask of the applicant at this time? Uh, yes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> is the, is the uh, wall that you propose to build uh, part of the septic system that no. No. it's completely independent no, of it? By, by moving the, uh, Gary. When, when the Gary. House got reduced, oh, Gary. Can you just speak into the microphone? I'm sorry. Sorry about that, Gary. No, actually, uh, one of the comments that Pat did make was that the original design, we did have a, a couple that were going to require breakout barriers, but now when, when, we, when the footprints got reduced, we did have the ability to move them, so now the wall is not really part of it. It was just a landscaping feature, specifically there just to be able to try and flatten out the, dry, the, uh, the backyard for that first house. So it will have no role whatsoever with respect to the construction of the house? No. No, strictly a landscape feature. And how high will the wall be? About three or four feet. There's a couple spots in town where I know there's some big rocks <laughs> that they're trying to get rid of. Okay, good. Um, I lost my train of thought. I'll, I'll circle back. No questions? No questions. Okay. 
Um, I have no questions at this time either. Um, so I think, oh, yeah. it, oh he's remembered. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are the test pits that were dug uh, previously located near where you want to um, put the new septic fields? Uh, there's one of them that doesn't have anything on it because it was uh, right beside the old well and it was actually very, very close to where the old house, the old 304 was. So, no, unfortunately they were all pretty much out front. Mm. Is, is, the, uh, is the material out there pretty consistent throughout the site? Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's some of the best gravel in Hingham. Okay. All right, thank you. I think TA would, we can, we can cut deals. <laughs> <laughs> Are you proposing to swap some of the gravel there for soil derived from other locations? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I can, yeah. Okay. Do you need a, in a conventional application, would you need a permit for the amount of gravel you propose to take out of there? Yes, we would. Yeah, we've actually requested that waiver, yeah. I think, what is it, anything over 100 yards? Yeah, you require a special permit associated with the removal. But one thing you have to remember, on Derby Brook, we actually had authority to bring that site right down to street level, and we didn't do it. So you're saying the site under consideration currently was previously permitted to be reduced right down to, street to the level. street level. That that Derby Brook uses now to enter the site. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And we didn't do it because the house was left up at the end of the day. What was the rationale sought at the time for getting that permission? We were prepping the site for the town of Hingham for a fire station, for that remote station. And that's how it, it would have been prepped. Okay. You would have brought it right down to street level so that they could have easily just driven driven in off the street right into the fire station, yeah, right into the station. I have a follow-up question. When you're saying swap it out, are you swapping it out for materials in Hingham, loam in Hingham? Yes. So all the gravel would say in, in, pretty much in, in town? Yeah. Because if not, then they're going to need a general bylaw waiver as well, which prohibits the removal of gravel from the town. So I think you just have to deter. There's a general bylaw, Article 10, Section 34. I, th I, I think that's one of the waivers we is requested. That a, is that yeah. a, no? Okay. No, it's from so it that, from so, yeah. The zoning bylaw. So there's, there's, a, there's a zoning. the waivers I requested, Emily? You, you requested a waiver of the earth removal regulations under the zoning bylaw. Yes. Um, which actually you don't need um, because 40Bs are not required to seek waivers from special permit provisions. Um, However, there's also a complementary general bylaw that regulates removal of certain earth materials from the town. Um, so if it's going anywhere outside of Hingham, that's another waiver you would need to request. Okay. But it sounds like you've got locations in town. Um, yeah, we, yeah, we have locations in town. <laughs> it all sounds very cryptic. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 know, I know a couple that uh, we, can, we can make a swap. But we'll have to, that'll, I mean, that should probably get documented. Mm -hmm. okay. um. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, on Baker Hill, they, they will perch water tables on uh, some of the areas. Is that an issue here at all in any no. way, shape, or form? Not that I'm aware of. We never ran, we, it never occurred to us out, out back. We haven't seen it in, the, in this site yet either. And there's, there's a well on the site that's going to be discontinued, is it? Yeah. How is how is that fed? You know. Fed? Yeah. I mean, was it dug or is it is? It no, it's a drilled well. Yeah. Oh, it's drilled. Okay. Yeah, it's a drilled well right in the front yard. Okay. I just have one more comment. Yeah, sure. And I don't know if Emily had already raised it at the prior meeting, which is the, the to num you need to number the lots. So we need like a lot one and a lot two, because they're not. They're not easily Clear. referenced um, on here. So it would be good. And I think Emily already decided to number them for her own purposes, um, which is which 302 is 
Uh, the front one, which is 304, is, I'm, yeah. I'm calling lot one, and 302, lot two, if that's convenient. Anything else from the board? Susan? All set? Okay. Um, thank you very much, Mr. James. At this point, I think we're going to um, open it up for public comment. First, um, if possible, I'd like to hear from any public officials who are here um, who would like to speak. And again, if you can just go to the podium and uh, speak into the microphone. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Um, Kirk Schultz, 65 Prospect Street. I'd like to start that um, I'm not here representing the Board of Health. I'm a member of the Board of Health. Um, but I am going to make a few comments on my own and then talk about my experience with the Board of Health with applications similar to this. Okay. So speaking uh, from myself, when I view a couple of homes, um, you know, this is important for our community. And I remember watching this very meeting and, and Paul mentioning his time upstairs with the selectmen that affordable housing was really important. It's really important to everybody. And so when I see a few homes, it'd be my goal that these homes would be occupied by families. Because so often, you know, growing up, um, kids are in apartment buildings and smaller facilities. They don't have yards to play in. So I'd like to see both of these homes have three bedrooms in them. A parent, a bedroom, a male and a female bedrooms. You know, that would be my goal for this. Uh, and that way children can play outside, play in the yard, do the things that we all did growing up that frequently we see fewer and fewer kids doing, um, but you know, we'll hopefully see a resurgence of, of, of kids going outside. And this might be one of the opportunities that we have, one of the few opportunities to again get a, a home that's affordable for a family. So that's speaking for myself. As far as my position with the Board of Health, I was asked today to come up uh, to talk a little bit about the Board of Health's perspective on the septic system in specific and the setback to the uh, portable well next door um, from our executive health officer who was unable to come here tonight. But let me start off with a, another comment. Um, I got up in front of a former 40B application process uh, for a different part of the town. And I mentioned to the applicant that it was unfortunate that the applicant didn't come to the Board of Health to kind of float their project before us because we can give them suggestions, insight, and methods that would help them achieve their goal that fit within the regulatory construct that, we're, that we have within the town. And I chastised them. They, they never came before us. They just kind of rammed it through and never ever came before us. And I'm equally disappointed that a worthy applicant here has done something similar that we in the Board of Health, we never heard from them at all. And we feel as though it would have been helpful just to hear our perspective and some of the pitfalls that they may encounter in this particular project. So I'm here tonight to represent, not myself, because the Board has not, I'm not, certainly not here to represent the Board of Health, because we've never heard any of this. No one's come before us. And so I'm here to talk on behalf of the executive health officer that has had conversations with um, um, town administrators regarding this particular project. And some of the concerns that she brought up to me, um, because I was here f actually upstairs, to, or downstairs, <laughs> to listen to uh, uh, some of the, 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 the school and, and the water, uh, com um, water department issue. So let me just say with regard to Title V, let's say that we on the Board of Health do not oppose any re removal of the town's local septic regulatory restrictions or reg uh, regulations. And everything goes through Title V, everything. Throw all the Board of Health regulations for hanging them outside, uh, away, outside. And we're just going to look at Title V from a, 
a read of this particular project, Title V, that the Title V looks at properties within Zone 2. And you know, the two 40B applications that I'm familiar with that I spoke with, one of them was completely outside of Zone 2, and the other one was completely within Zone 2, the 901 Main Street. And so I'm very familiar with Title V and Title V policy. This has, this is a hybrid. This is the first that we have uh, Zone 2 bisecting the lots. And it's our reading, again, our executive health officer, along with my looking at it and agreeing with her, at least on a preliminary standpoint, that the definition of a facility is contained within Title V. Take out your phones, read it. And a facility is what Zone 2 relates to. Zone 2 isn't, there's no setback to a Zone 2 that you would see from an adjoining well, that you would see from a property line, you'd see from a building, you'd see from a septic system. It's the facility. It's within or outside of Zone 2. So our read of Title V regulation says that the facility includes, well, the SAS, the soil absorption system. It includes the septic system, the stuff under the ground that's moving that fluid around. It includes the dwellings and includes the land. So right now, from our interpretation of Title V regulation, that we would consider both of these lots to be within Zone 2 and that the septic systems would have to comply with Zone 2 requirements. Which are? Which are that each bedroom would have to have 10,000 square feet of land available for it. So the way this is constructed now, you have two lots. You could put four bedrooms on this particular parcel, the two parcels together. And the way that it is bisected, it seems like one house could have one bedroom and the other could have two. You actually lose a bedroom. And again, if the applicant had come before the Board of Health, we could have expressed our concerns and talked about this and, and mentioned that, you know, this is something that we have an issue with. Now, <laughs> you know, I live in this town. I already told you I want to see a couple of homes here. And so we will get legal opinion on this for you because I know that you didn't expect to hear this. And I know that Emily didn't expect to hear this until today. And I didn't expect to say it. But fortunately, I have a solution for you. That Title V allows for an applicant to have aggregate credit land applied to the property for the purpose of Title V nitrogen um, um, denitrification or, or the additional property for denitrification purposes. Because think about it, zone two is this huge area. It's about a fourth of our town. And so what Title V allows, and I have it here, you go on the website and look at it, what Title V allows is two processes. Again, one was going to be used over at 901 Main Street, which was um, credit land from the wetland near, right next door. The other process is you have credit land, but it isn't contiguous and not owned by the applicant. Again, 901, both parcels were owned by the applicant. One they owned outright, the other they had um, a purchase and sales agreement. And the beautiful part about this particular process of credit land, which we've never used before, I don't know anyone, you know, it's, it's available, we've never done it because we have our 12-5 requirement. 12,500 square feet per bedroom requirement. So, you know, we just haven't dealt with this 10,000 before except for 40 Bs. So what the Title V allows is for a municipality, as approved by its board, uh, its selectmen and the state, to assign land somewhere else within Zone 2 that is under their control the municipality's control as credit land for this other project. I recommend we do that. But as far as ramming through a 
Title V process without my executive health officer agreeing that, boy, this is something different that we have not approved before. And so I'm up here to tell you that as a <coughs> member of the Board of Health, this project, as I've never seen before, I can't support that because from what I read and what I've heard, this does not meet Title V. I understand there's a different process that we could go through, and so I'm coming back to where I started, which I think that the process should be moving forward. For a 40B, hey, get downstairs, talk to everybody. Yeah, that's how we get things done around this building. You know? Come talk to us, and we'll tell you our concerns. And if we disagree, then we can have a legal discussion. And that's why we have fabulous lawyers for the town, and, and they have lawyers themselves. And we resolve this. But right now, you know, we're blind to this. I, I didn't even expect to come here today. So I would like to hear that the, I, um, from what I understand, you're not voting tonight. But um, I know that our official response is our standard response, that the board believes that the safety, the safe, uh, uh, the safety nets that we've employed through Title V, uh, sorry, through uh, Town of Hingham supplementary regulations are appropriate or else we wouldn't have done them. We're actually in the process of kind of amending some of those now. And that we would hold this project to those same regulations as anybody that would come in. We don't show favoritism for anybody. So. I think that a little bit more work needs to be done as far as the septic design here. But you've heard what you know, I, I hope that the end result would be. And again, from my perspective, credit land, because we're a municipality, an independent um, owner couldn't do credit land offsite. They could only do something that's contiguous. I think it's, it was written for this in mind, that there's a greater good. Because here on the public health, Yes, we protect the environment, we protect our water supply, we protect, protect you know, your neighborhoods, your backyards. But man, we protect the health of the town. This, providing for some kids to have a quality life, you know, that's what we do. So um, I'll answer any questions you have. Again, I do not resent, represent the Board of Health tonight. I'm just giving you my concerns, and I'll do my best uh, if you have any questions. No question. So you're saying that because the town owns the property, the town can designate another piece of the town's property as credit land in order to get the benefit of the minimum requirement for Title V septic systems to be built on the site? It's my understanding through reading through Title V that the town can grant credit land, and I don't believe it has to be the owner. Well, that's what I got the real estate council over here. <laughs> yeah. Susan, can you speak so, to this? Yeah. Well, what I'll speak to is what this is the first time we're hearing this yeah, it is with the first respect time, to this yeah. project. And so I don't think I or Pat have had a chance to look at kind of the kind of the testimony that yeah. Kirk had tonight. So I, I would suggest that, you know, Pat and I need to look at it from our perspective areas of purview and then get back to the board on it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I would appreciate that. And if, if, not if, if, it either. if Susan, uh, Attorney Murphy, <laughs> has a, a legal okay. opinion, it's a ballot opinion, and, and we would, on the Board of Health, we'd, we'd, we'd love that because you know we're yeah. not experts at everything. Title V, but uh, to get into the words, and that's what attorneys are all about. And it's really the definition of facility. Because Title V, it talks about um, you know, a facility that you're going to transfer uh, ownership and that you know, facility is the same thing that it mentions, and that's a lot. It's not a house. You're transferring ownership of a lot when you sell it. Um, and the same word, facility, is used in describing the um, entity that is, um, comes under Title two, um, uh, the Zone 2, Title 5 conditions. And Susan, I actually printed that out for you. Yeah, we'll talk about that okay, briefly. I'll take a look at it a few uh, year ago, but uh, that in specific. I highlighted the which, pertinent which, parts. Um, what, what doc, this is just certain pages. What yeah, that is, is um, in Title V, they have uh, Title V regulation. This is their policy. 
And remember they had two policies, the 2009, this is the 2016. They're identical except for yep. the example they provide. Yep. So this is Title V policy that we on the Board of Health can go through in determining, again, credit land for something that the town believes is important for the health of the community. And I, I, from listening to the selectmen or watching the selectmen a couple of, uh, oh, listening, I was there, um, a couple of nights ago, seems like, you know, they agree with me that houses, you know, this is important for families in the, in the community. Okay, I'm gonna pass this down to Emily. Emily, if you would, for the record, and then if you would scan it tomorrow and send sure. it to me, that would be great. Yep. Thanks. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you very, very much. much. Yeah, sure. and sorry for last minute. Maybe we can change the process. Okay, um, anyone from the Affordable Housing Trust would like to speak? Now would be a good time. Hi, Nancy Kerber, 6 Blackberry Lane, and a member of the Affordable Housing Trust. Um, there's a number of us from the trust here tonight wanting to show our support, here to show our support for the project. Um, I wanted to speak about really the need for affordable housing in town. Uh, recently, we're in the process and close to the end of the process of putting a housing plan together. And so, you know, some numbers and facts and data have come out of that um, process, which I think will help support the need for what we're needing for affordable housing in town. Um, uh, the plan shown that there's several key areas of concern um, pertinent to this, which is um, highlighting the need for families are finding it increasingly hard to find uh, starter homes or rentals in their price range um, as they're looking in Hingham. Um, children who are raised in the community, as we've talked about, um, are finding it hard to be able to be able to move back to the town they grew up in. Um, and local workers, including municipal employees, are commuting from further and further distances to find affordable living. Um, and then there's just some numbers that we have come up um, in the plan, um, speaking to uh, how difficult it is to afford a home in Hingham um, and what a, a deep need it is to provide uh, affordable housing. Um, median sale price of a single family home in Hingham is $813,000. In order to afford this um, home, an, a, a household would have to have an earned estimated earnings of $187,000. The median household income is $125,000. Um, so there's a, there's a gap to affordability for what people are earning and what they can afford. Um, and that's of course even deeper for people who are earning below the median. Um, and another sort of piece of concern around affordability in town is, is uh, that people are having to overspend on, on housing. Um, that of the, uh, 800 and nearly 8,500 nearly homes in Hingham. 30% uh, are spending too much on their housing. 17% of that um, household are spending more than half their income on housing costs. So um, there's concern around affordability um, and we feel strongly that providing affordable units um, which this project would do is is incredibly important. And there's more numbers coming with the housing plan as we get that <laughs> off the off the table. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, I think we'll open it up um, to anyone who'd like to speak at this point. If you can just come forward, uh, state your name and address. Um, yes, sir. Good evening, Dave Nickerson, 300 Whiting Street. Um, I think I'm the closest abutter to this project. Um, I was up here a couple months ago. I 
brought forth my concerns of the project in front of the, the uh, selectmen. They decided to go forward with allowing the two houses to be reviewed at that time. Um, I don't know if there's anyone <coughs> more than me that wants to see this project go forward. So for the last 10 years, I've lived next to this property and the house that's on it now is in shambles. And I had good faith from the town that this project would go forward in a timely manner. Um, I have two young kids, two girls in the school system, they're seven. Um, I bought this house as an investment and I feel like I represent a blue collar worker in this town where I bought my house for 315000 and I grew up in this town and now I live in this town. Um, I, I appreciate what the affordable housing does for this town. I feel like um, I want people to be able to live in this town and you know those blue collars that actually work for the town to stay here. And that doesn't seem to be what's happening in at least my 10 years. Um, I'm just gonna bring a couple concerns. The first one's gonna be my well, my drinking well. <laughs> it's definitely within 100 feet of the proposed plans. And that's my concern, not only mine, but my children. So I think Board of Health, you said, you know, you're here to protect the kids and the quality in life <clears throat> of our kids. Well, those are my kids and, and I'm here to protect them today. Um, I've lived through several projects living there in 10 years. Derby Brook, I actually purchased my house while Derby Brook was being developed. I understood, um, from my understanding, when purchased the land, that the lot next to me that was being used as an office, that it was going to be turned over the town at the end, which was, I think, great, giving back to the town for this large development. But it was portrayed to me, and I think some of the, the board actually voted to keep that structure that is, is now in shambles right now to maybe redo that and to sell that, and it would be a great rental for someone for low income for the house and to keep it in the town one house that they wanted to keep. So other than my drinking water being the biggest concern, my next is the egress of my driveway. And if you don't mind, I'm just going to pass a couple pictures forward. So these pictures show my driveway, my car, and already right now with Derby Brook and the rest of Blue City Freeway Street, the traffic getting worse. I currently compete to get out on Whiting Street every day, my wife as well, and this driveway is no less than five feet away from mine. Um, so that is another concern, is egress to my property. If this project goes forward, and I hope it does, because again, 10 years I've been living next to this, um, I think it's a perfect property for one house. Originally trying to put three houses on this lot I thought was crazy, but two is still crazy. We talk about kids and we talk about you know the future and, and how affordable housing and it'd be great to have a family there. And I'd love to have my kids play with you know a close neighbor, but not at the expense of jamming two houses in there. Where will these kids play? Is there enough room on that site for a playground? Because there's no sidewalk on 53. So those kids are now gonna be cornered. And even if there's a sidewalk, how far does that sidewalk get them? right down the street <coughs> to, the assist, to the new assisted living, that's it. Um, another concern I have is utilities. So right now, the utilities for that property come directly across my driveway. And then it went to the existing office. I hope if this project goes forward that, the, that utility problem could be rectified now while it's in the town's hand before it's left to maybe somewhere where they'd run out of money. The line drops for the, the communication and the electric lines come directly across my driveway to a common pole, which my property once you know has the easement with, but I since then I've tried to improve my property. The first thing I did was I did underground service to get my utilities off that pole, knowing that that was one move to help separate the property and help this area. So I now have no utilities on that pole. I hope that would be rectified. Um, Again, I'm here for my kids. 
this is my investment. I'm the closest abutter to this property. It means the most to me. And again, I, I hope this goes through, and I hope it goes through in a timely manner, because it's been 10 years. And this is a small picture of that house, but if you guys really invested in this, go take a look at that property and look at what I've been living next to for 10 years. So I hope you take this all into consideration, and I appreciate your time. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public who would like to speak? Yes, sir. Either from Habitat or off the town? I think that should be fine, yes. Thank you. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Good to see you again. You as well. Uh, my name is Mike Fisher, and um, I represent the 20 homeowners for uh, Derby Brook condominiums. Just your address, please, Mr. 20 Fisher. 20 Derby Brook Way. Thank you. We're the abutters on the other side. Um, I think first thing I want to do is to offer a word of thanks um, to Chief Glenn Olson, to Mary Savage Dunham at the community planning, to Susan Sarney, the executive health officer, and to Patrick Brennan, I didn't realize I was gonna be meeting him tonight, <coughs> the town's engineering consultant. Uh, we, our community, have read all of their reports. Um, their reports were excellent, uh, they were detailed, and they were spot on with what the issues are and what the problems are regarding that property. <coughs> So the picture that you saw over there gives one view of the property. This one I hope will give you another. So this is Whiting Street right out here. And this is Derby Brook Way that comes in. And this is the stream down here. And in the black you see in greater outline what the issue is with that property. So it's less than an acre. Uh, we've had an excellent discussion tonight about what zone two is. Zone two is this red line right here. So zone two, that portion of zone two is about 30% of the entire property. So that cuts off right there and goes that way. Um, all of these brown hash lines, as I described last time, um, and that you see here, are slope. So between where this brown line is at the top to the bottom over here, 60 linear feet, and the slope drops about 18 and a half feet in 60 linear feet. So it literally slopes down that bank that you see. Over here, it's even worse because you see down in here, it slopes down that 18 and a half feet in about 30 linear feet. So this over here is, is drops right over here, right down into the marshlands there. Okay, so. <clears throat> The portion of the space that is actually usable is bounded by what's not on that side where the Title II line is and what's not where all this slope is. Unless, of course, you're going to reduce this entire hill, as Jay was talking about, uh, down to where the road is. And if you'll recall, in the warrant in 2013, it was reported that the town of Hingham, the Board of Selectmen decided not to do that and the reason they decided not to do that was because of all the issues that they had with the stream and the wetlands and the wildlife habitat. Uh, copies of that are in the letter that I gave you the last time. <clears throat> so what the real issue is, is the usable space that you have is bounded by this red line over here and away from this slope over here. 
So unless you're going to take all that down, you still have that slope to deal with. So that means that the first property, which is 304, the actual usable space is that little triangle that you have right in there, where you have a house, and you have a septic system, you have leaching fields, and you have a standby leaching field. The second house, 302, is bounded by your 100 foot riparian zone right there, your Title II line over here, the boundary right in there. So your second house here is also got its leaching fields, septic system to stand by the house. So basically you're putting two three bedroom houses on, in about a third of an acre. All right, so this green line that you see right here is the demarcation that you've seen for the two properties that they want to have. The one on this side, 304, is 15,700 square feet. According to the normal town of Hingham Code, that's a one bedroom house. This one down here is barely 25,550 square feet. According to the Hingham Code, that's a two bedroom house. <clears throat> All right, but instead of that, you want to put two three bedroom houses on a third of an acre, <clears throat> which is basically half of what the town of Hingham regulations are. I'm going to leave that up there and hope it won't fall down. <clears throat> so, there is a way to do that. There is a way to put those two three-bedroom houses on that one-third of an acre on the top of that hill, and that's if you seek 13 waivers. And that's what they've done. They've got nine Board of Health waivers to Board of Health rules and regulations, and four uh, waivers for the Town of Hingham zoning laws. The issue not mentioned here before, and the issue that's really the relevant issue, I think, is that the issue, of course, is that the town of Hingham has exceeded its statutory minimum of subsidized housing, and therefore granting waivers and variances to zoning codes and health regulations is no longer consistent with local needs. <clears throat> After reading all the comments written by Patrick Brennan, Chief Olson, Mary Savage Dunham, and Susan Sarney, we thought it was important to lay out clearly for you for each one of those 14, uh, those 13 zoning waiver bylaws exceptions, exactly what that meant in real terms to uh, the river, the wetlands. And no, I'm not going to read all those to you tonight. Okay, so what I do want to do is just give you a couple of short examples. Health waiver number one perk tests are valid for two years. The last tests were conducted in 2003, 17 years ago. That was called out both by Mr. Brennan and by the executive health officer in their reports. <coughs> health waiver number three, no sewage disposal system within 250 feet of a private potable well. Mr. Nickerson's well is called out by Mr. Brennan, who measured the distance as 122 feet. It was also called out by the executive health officer. Health waiver number five, each bedroom produces 110 gallons of wastewater per day. By code, 41,287 square feet would authorize one three bedroom house. Six bedroom house, six bedrooms would require 75,000 square feet. On this space, that's twice what the code allows. It's also called out by the executive health officer. Health waiver number eight is very serious. Depending on the PERC test results, remember they're trying to waive the PERC test, that's one of their waivers. Depending on the PERC test results, there can be a requirement for a 12 month settlement period, as well as a design engineer inspection and certification to the board. Without any PERC test, there's no way to know. It's like sticking your head in the sand and hoping nothing catastrophic happens. Going to the zoning waiver, zoning waiver number two. One structure per 40,000 square feet. Two structures in 41,000 square feet is double what the zoning laws allow. Zoning waiver number four. Earth removal permit has specific requirements that make soil 
soil removed properly. I'm even more and more concerned about this after hearing the plan to put in that wall over there and what we're going to do by swapping out the dirt that we've heard about tonight. <clears throat> this plot has an unusual topography, as you can see. It is close to a stream, it has wetlands, and there's no soil testing for contaminants belonging to that old house that's up there and been there forever. Waiving the earth removal permit could do irreparable damage to our stream, our wetlands, and wildlife habitat. Mm -hmm. right, I'm going to stop there and give you the detailed copies that I would ask you to read. <clears throat> These identify each one of the 13 waivers that are requested. And in two or three sentences tells you what the real world impact is of approving that waiver. And I have copies for anybody else who would want them as well. Uh, we'll Trying to be as transparent on this as we possibly can. Finally, <clears throat> didn't know this was happening tonight either. On 21st of January, I attended a Hingham Board of Health public meeting held to discuss supplemental Title V regulations that Hingham wanted to enact. The primary presenter for the town opened the meeting by saying, and I quote, protecting our environment and drinking water is the most important thing we do as a town. <clears throat> the person speaking was Dr. Kurt Schultz, and I was very impressed that he really believed that statement to be true. I have to tell you that I don't think credit land does much to protect our streams and our wetlands and our wildlife habitat. <clears throat> um, so let me stop there and just ask if you would please consider the comments of Dave Dickerson tonight and ours as you make the decision. We're much in, very much in favor of a Habitat for Humanity house up there. And I think, as you can see from our presentation, there really is only room for one. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Fisher. Any other member of the public would like to comment? What, what are the next steps? So it sounds like there, a little bit of research is going to be done with respect to the, the Zone 2 slash Title 5 um, requirements and whether they apply to the, this particular property. Um, a more thorough review of the revised plans just received this afternoon um, needs to take place. Eventually, when it seems we have a final plan set, at that point can start going through requested waivers um, and potential conditions of approval if there's anything that needs to be mitigated. Um, I would think maybe an early March um, time frame might make sense. If do we have something scheduled in early March, or would we have to we, do a special? We, it would be something special. You have a meeting right now scheduled for February 25th, and then nothing between that and March 17th. And what's on for the 17th? It's a robust agenda. Okay. All right. So possibly the third, if we were sticking to two series. Yeah. Out of town. You're out of town. Sorry. That's okay. Tenth. I'm away the nineteenth through the sixteenth. The ninth through the sixteenth. Okay, so he'll be gone. So I mean, you can proceed without me, but I just wouldn't be able to be here. How about later in March, like the next week, March twenty fourth. That's fine by me. I'm open. Is that okay with you? Yes. Uh, sure. 
Paul is groaning, but he says sure. <laughs> um, does March 24th work for the applicant? I'd have to go back. It is our normal board meeting, so that's 13 people I'd have to okay. change. It would be ideal, but it's important, so. Okay. Um, what about March 31st? Uh, I am scheduled to arrive home at 5 o'clock that day, so <laughs> assuming, my, assuming my plane is not late, I should be able to do that, but I'd hate to be caught. Yeah, I don't know. That seems a little risky. Better. I'm sorry? 24th would be better. Okay. I think the 24th maybe sounds like the best. <coughs> Day, if that's okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. All right. So then I would accept a motion to continue this hearing to March 24th at 7 p.m. So moved. <coughs> Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you very much. The, so uh, moved. Minutes dated January 7th. Second. So moved. Yeah.